Hey guys, it's the 26th of February, 2023. I'm in Whatcom County, city of Blaine in Washington State. I am actually gonna go do a 1A, 2A audit here at the Border Patrol station at the border crossing at uh, US Freeway 5. So we're heading over there right now. We're gonna check it out, make sure they respect our liberties to record and photograph in public and that's what we want so i'll see you guys over there hey everyone i am free i'm reporting on a very important and unusual first amendment case today it's about an arbitration agreement between two journalists ray askins and christopher ramirez against the department of homeland security for violations of their first amendment liberties as press i went to blaine washington the customs and border patrol border area in february of 2023 checking on compliance with the Askins agreement brokered at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. First, some backstory from Hold CBP Accountable and the ACLU, the representative law firm, links in the description below about what led to this agreement though. This case is about preserving the fundamental First Amendment right to photograph and monitor publicly visible law enforcement activity and challenging CBP's abusive behavior towards those who seek to exercise this right at or near ports of entry. Ray Askins is a U.S. citizen and an environmental activist. While standing on a public street in Calexico, inside the United States, he took photographs of the exterior of the Calexico Port of Entry building to illustrate a, rep a presentation he planned to give on vehicle emissions at ports of entry. Christian Ramirez is a U.S. citizen and a human rights activist who, while standing at the U.S. side of the border, photographed male CBP officers improperly frisking female travelers at the San Isidro Port of Entry. When they took their photographs, both Mr. Mr. Askins and Mr. Ramirez were on the United States side of the border in areas open to the public. The matters they photographed were publicly visible. In both cases, CBP officers detained, harassed, and threatened them, temporarily confiscated their cameras, and deleted their photographs. CBP officers also physically abused Mr. Askin. This case seeks to prevent CBP from interfering with or otherwise suppressing the public's lawful recording of federal public activities. In September 2013, the district court denied in part and granted in part the government's motion to dismiss. The government then filed a motion for clarification of the court's order on the motion to dismiss. In April 2014, the district court granted in part and denied in part the government's government's motion. In this order, the district court reaffirmed its First Amendment analysis in its September 2013 order on the government's motion to dismiss. The court, however, ordered the parties to submit supplemental briefs relating to plaintiff's Fourth Amendment claims. The parties filed supplemental briefs in late spring 2014. In January 2015, the district court issued another order granting the government's motion in part. This order addressed plaintiff's Fourth Amendment claims and invited plaintiffs to file an amended complaint. Plaintiffs did so. Once more, the government moved to dismiss and plaintiffs opposed. In March 2016, the district court dismissed plaintiffs' First Amendment complaint. Plaintiffs appealed to the Ninth Circuit. They filed their opening brief on September 26, 2016. The Cato Institute and the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press filed amicus briefs in support of plaintiffs' appellants. Appellate briefing was confirmed in 2017. In February 2018, the Ninth Circuit heard oral argument on plaintiff's appeal to Cal's dismissal of the first amended complaint. On August 14, 2018, the Ninth Circuit issued its opinion and reversed the district court's ruling, ordering the case to be remanded for discovery. The government filed an answer on March 8, 2019, and the party spent several months in active discovery. In September 2020, a final settlement was entered and the case was dismissed. Now, I've reached out to the ACLU and they may be interested in my having captured footage of what I believe to be a violation of the Askins Agreement. I'd like to see what you all think about that. Comment below. Thanks for watching. What? Are you border patrol? Oh no. <laughs> Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I just don't see it too much like I oh, yeah, no sweat. <laughs> Have a good day. Yeah. Take care. Guys, we're at the border crossing into the United States, so we're still in the United States property. It is February 26, 2023. Just gonna see if the Border Patrol respects our liberties to record and photograph in public.
Go, what's up? What? No, just stay right up there and everything. See, just take pictures and recording and everything like that. This is a public area, no problem. Yeah. Alright, sounds good. So you can just stay up there. So I'm okay with you doing that. Okay. okay. Well, I can be down on the sidewalk too. Um, yeah, so that's fine for you to be over here and everything like that. Sure. Cool. Uh, so good weather. So you ready for the snow coming up today? <laughs> well, it's been cold with the, uh, the, literally, what was it, two days ago, they had gale force winds. I mean, wow, that was cold. I was uh, not expecting it to be effectively, what, three, four below zero? <laughs> yeah, that was so not pleasant. Yeah, so probably like at four o'clock is going to start and everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, I mean, I'm, you know, not used to the uh, weather this far up north, so I had to try to weatherize myself a little bit more so I mean I was told it's actually all things considered somewhat decent this time of the year up here like kind of you know low 40s that kind of thing so yeah, it's usually like that so it hasn't snowed probably probably like in a month and a half or so it hasn't snowed. Oh, okay yeah, it's been pretty mild that's good so, so where are you from oh just south of here just a little warmer <laughs> so that's about it yeah just checking it out so. Yeah, just talking to him and everything like that. So he said, you know, good place for pictures. Yeah, it's beautiful out here. Yeah, look at this site out here. Usually we're a lot busier uh, today, but I think the weather probably kept a lot of people away. Really? Yeah, usually we're really. Yeah, how come on, the Canadians got to be more used to uh, this kind of weather than than us. I mean, they're they're coming from further north. <laughs> yeah, so I guess the snow kind of scares people away. Last oh, weekend we were. About, now I think you're just trash talking yeah. the Canadians. Yeah. It's all snow up there, isn't it? Yeah. As soon as you cross the border, it's like three feet of snow. <laughs> all right, sir, you take it easy. All right, yeah, you too. You. All right, take care now. I got a question. Yes, sir. When uh, Canadians come this way, like, what's the process? What do they do? How do they get through here? Do they go right there? Well, it, well, a couple things first is, are you going to be crossing? Are you coming from Canada now? No, no, I'm an American. Okay. Uh, if you're not crossing the border, then we we can't have you hanging around on federal property carrying a firearm. Okay. Why? Well, it violates federal law. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah. So publicly accessible areas? Yeah, yeah. yeah I oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to go so, in there. Okay, so if like you're going to... sidewalks and stuff like so that. So where, where are you planning on going? Oh, going I'm now? just uh, gathering content for a story that I'm doing. I, I understand. So how long would you like to stay and gather content for, you think? I don't know. I mean, it really depends on the story. You know, you never know where it's going to okay. take you, so... 
So there's a, there's a few issues that can come out if you're hanging out here, okay? okay. Loitering and causing disturbances on the federal property. Could be a ticketable offense, right? Are you familiar with those sections? Of oh, really? I'm super familiar with that. Loitering uh, is only if you don't have a purpose. Okay. And as a journalist, I have a purpose. Okay. I mean, you're not obviously wanting to bridge my free press rights, so right. clearly. Well, we have directives that we're supposed to follow. To yeah, like the with audio DHS recording. memo. From 2018? Yeah, so you're familiar with all that? Oh, yeah. Okay, have you come through here to film before? No, first time. Okay. Um, what what can I help you with then for Nothing. helping? I don't need finish. help. I, that was my only question. Just wanted to see like how how the process works for Canadians and whatnot. Yeah, it's it's just the same as for Americans. They present their identification. We do a cursory check. And mm -hmm. A lot of times they're on their way here in just a matter of minutes. Gotcha. Just ran up for some ice cream, come back and check ID kind of thing. Multiple things. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but just just so you're aware, we can't have you filming any of the inspection area for the inspection process. You're, are you familiar with that? Oh, uh, well, I mean, geez. we're worried about protecting personally identifiable information as part of it, right? Yeah. So like you as a person crossing the border, you may not want your pub your personal information made public, right? Yeah, that's just like a that's more of like a feeling things for people. I mean, well, the directives cover that though too. We're we're yeah, responsible well, I'm not for covering anything like that. So. Are, we're responsible for protecting their their information yeah. though too, right? Sure. And obviously, I mean, I'm not okay. taking it getting into their personally identifiable information. So. Okay. So so what's your plan here now? Then? Uh, just continuing to gather content for a news story I'm working on. Okay, so if, if I leave now, what's what what's the plan? Uh, do like any other decent American does, just be a law-abiding citizen, not yeah. break any laws, just do what I do as a journalist. Okay, so again, I just wanted to bring up loitering could be an issue if you're hanging out here Boy. unattended, right? Without purpose. Is that you really you really want to go with that because. That's it's just what I've been instructed to, to go with. So. Yeah. Loitering is only if you don't have a purpose. If okay. you reread the statute, yeah. and there's a plethora of case law. If you go and look oh, up on I'm, Lexis, the federal case law on loitering, it's pretty and, extensive. But that's why I'm here, is to try and determine what your purpose is and then help you with that purpose so that you can move on. Oh, no. I'm so, uh, I'm actually pretty skilled as a journalist. Don't need any assistance with it. I mean, unless... Okay. I mean, are you a journalist yourself? I, I'm not. Gotcha. Yeah. So, no, I'm good. I know how to do it. Okay, so what what's your plan from now on? You like? Well, I'm an investigative journalist. If I share my plan with you, it's going to potentially kind of ruin the story because the story involves you guys. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to let you be. You going to let me be? Yeah. I'm just. I'm not going to bother you. Cool. I'm, I'm going to let you be. But at some point, we're going to need you to move along. You understand that, right? Oh, so you're saying press? What's the what is the time limit on the well, press? Well, you know, I'm. Again, I'm gonna let you do your thing, but we'll come we'll come and talk to you again, I guess, if, gotcha. if it so, gets to that point. I man, I, I read that house bill that was going I didn't realize the president signed it into law already. For what? Uh for a time limit on being a journalist. I mean usually the First Amendment says nothing on it, but I guess they just passed that federal statute that says you can only be a journalist for two hours near a CBP area. That's really rough. Okay. Damn. Here I thought I could be a journalist 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and right. turns out bald eagles only fly for two hours around here. That's All right, so you're you're well aware then. Well aware of what? The the statutes that, <laughs> that I'm referring to with loitering <laughs> and disturbances. Yes. Okay. Cool. Do you, have a, do you have a card? That no, I, I don't. No. Okay. So is it loving or loving? Loving, sir. Loving. Okay. Yes, sir. So loving, as I've said, and I want to have an amicable uh, situation here with you right. guys. Loitering is really clear. You must have a purpose. If you don't have a purpose, like if you're just walking down the sidewalk and you're not gathering content for a story, if you're not being a journalist, right? Possibly, possibly. But that's a real gray area, even right. with federal case law that's been handled. Right. So the mountain you would have to climb <laughs> to gain enough evidence to provide reasonable articulatable suspicion that that crime is occurring right i mean at that point you might as well be the first climber of mons olympus on mars i'm mean, really climb a big mountain Tip. that's a, that's a have big you one. have you been around the ports before then and you've had these discussions uh i ports which which ones I, I'm well, i've been, I've been near ports all over the country all right sure. have, have you had these discussions with with cbp officials then in the past oh sure okay how yeah. how did those encounters go well, the ones down south tend to be a lot more militant. I okay. mean, 
I'm gathering probably just because they run across a lot more crazy stuff on a daily basis. Not that that's an excuse, but I mean, we know what the southern border's like versus the northern border. I mean, you got a bunch of super polite Canadians and Americans coming back through. I doubt there's probably a whole bunch of crazy stuff that goes on here. Unless there is that you'd like to share for... For your story? For Unfortunately, story. I can't. Oh, okay. But yeah, things happen. Um, but yeah, loitering, I mean, I think I think we all know that there's no loitering well, going on here. <laughs> First of all, I'm talking with you. Second of all, I could stand right there for 10 hours straight just filming and gathering content for a news story and that's not loitering. In no way would that be loitering. Okay. You so, couldn't even write a children's fantasy book and call that loitering uh, in a fantasy book. Okay, so <clears throat> here on the federal, the other part of the thing that we're con concerned about is uh, the federal inspection site and you having a firearm. On federal property, you're sure. not allowed to have a firearm. Which That's is not why, true. Which is why we would like this you- This part, you absolutely can have a firearm. Which is why we would like you to either stay and film up away from our inspection site or continue into the U.S. I am in the U.S. Continue on your way into Blaine, the city of Blaine. No, I, I understand what you're saying, Major, but the reality is, is this area right here is not an authorized personnel only area. Otherwise, you guys would have signs for that. This area doesn't prohibit firearms. Otherwise, you'd have signs for that that would give the federal statute. I mean, we all know this. Come on. It's it's what it is. I mean, I get that you guys have concerns, okay. and that's fine. I mean, so unless if, my firearm's going to so turn if, into a levitating mass shooting on its own thing and just fly away and start taking everybody out, I mean, you have nothing to worry about. So I just want to let you know that if you do proceed to just stay here and loiter, we will be issuing you a $50 ticket. So you're gonna say you're gonna issue me a $50 Yeah, and ticket. then you can fight it in the courts, but sure. that's, that's what's gonna happen. So you can either wait up at the turn. So you're saying this is not a free press area. Correct. I cannot gather content for a news story. Correct, here. yeah. What statute is that? Under the- It's not it, loitering. Loitering is an infraction. Right now, sir, you're impeding me from my federal duties of- I'm not impeding you. Sure. Take a look. Because I am not, you are impeding me from doing my job. No, you're you coming are, out here talking to me on your own. You don't have to. You can go back inside or do whatever you want. Well, I'm just letting you know that this is what we will take you under if you do not forcibly proceed. assaults, resists, opposes, impedes, intimidates, or interferes with any person. How am I forcibly doing that? You're not. You're impeding our inspector. No, forcibly. Forcibly. Because if you do not move along, it is. Yeah. So you're saying if okay. I just move about and could, can gather my content. If you move your about into the city of Blaine or back to the turnaround. And I can just go back and forth. No. Just so you're saying I'm trespassing. Area. You're trespassing. Not trespassing at this at this time. Okay, then this is just getting really, really yeah. weird. I'm going to go call the chief. All right. Not understanding this. It's just the loitering thing, man. Like, it's not if, loitering. If you have business here to conduct with CBP, we're more than happy to help. I have business here to conduct about letting American citizens know how the Border Patrol checkpoint works. Okay. Well, it's... Why, I mean, there's there's nothing that tells me... Now, I, I'm i all over, you know, signage that says, hey, you yeah. can't, like, like I can't... Uh, I'm sure you guys probably got something else around this area that has vehicles in it, right? Some Wait. fenced area. It says, no trespassing, only authorized personnel, that kind of thing, right? People walk up and down this sidewalk all the time. Right loitering the statute says without a purpose okay well the, the my truth purpose of the matter, is protected by the first amendment as a journalist right um, but the truth of the matter is that we we've, we've been advised that if you're not conducting cbp business if there's not something we can help you with then we need you then to why don't you guys put up some signage that says this is a no press area this well, is not a this first is, amendment this area. is why we're advising you and we're not taking any action we're trying to let you know like hey man you're more than welcome to come and film our operation, but we want you staying in the state park area or within the city, but in our federal inspection area, you can't just loiter about taking video the entire day. Like that's just not how it works. So we're, because maybe perhaps the that lack of no signage. Sense. So this is a no press zone is what you're telling me on camera. You're telling me this is a no journalist, no press we, zone. We do allow press, but there's also a vetting process. Oh, no, no, CBP no. is. Let me ask you this. Pop quiz. I'll give you a thousand bucks if you can tell me who does this. Straight up, I'll give you a thousand bucks. Which government agency at any level, federal, state, county, city level, gives press credentials? Who 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 gives those press credentials? Uh, I don't think anyone 
don't give them no the one so there's, there's no, no, there's no agency federal, that does it right so when you're saying we vet you what you're saying is you're discriminating against me maybe because i'm white there, maybe there's because an, there's I'm, an office that does the no that's your office right you guys don't get to decide who's press and who is that's absurd right but the first amendment didn't say some people who are black white hispanic it, it do, you know, six foot i mean you're going down point. the path of discrimination right the now. the point that i'm trying to make is that cbp is trying to protect other people's private information oh but you're not willing to protect my rights so well, what you hear is we haven't asked for any of your information so well, absolutely but you shouldn't nothing right. nothing nefarious is happening just like no you wouldn't want somebody to publish your private information it's on a, not on a video it's not private and public man how but much this how area much, this area is this is a not private area over here the absolutely area. it's not right. private but, but it's not a private area okay. otherwise you guys would literally i'll tell you what there's there's a u.s code it's called 18 united states code section 795 you know what that says tell me it says if you put up a sign it says no photography i literally can't even stand over there let's say near the piece of arch right you're right or, and it says i can't even draw I can't even make a drawing of what's going on. If I'm over there with my little Vincent Van Gogh book and I'm going to town and this is what it looks like over at CBP, yeah. you could arrest me on that. Right. You don't have an 18 USC 795 sign. So how does that work? Okay. Well, so that's the other question I have for you. Uh, well, I guess you're both majors, so. Yeah. Um, you guys must promote quick around here. Everybody's a major. So. Just the two of us today. Okay. If you guys had a sign anywhere around here that was from Title 18 of the United States Code, Section 795, mm -hmm. which is the, I'm just telling the other mate, I know it sounds like you're familiar with it. You can't photo, you can't even draw, nothing. You can't replicate in any way whatsoever anything. That is the only statute on the books, the only one, mm -hmm. that prohibits any sort of replication by video, photograph, drawing, anything of a controlled area there is no 18 usc 795 sign right here now i mean if you guys are going to ticket me you're going to ticket me but the problem is is it's just going to come down on you guys because you guys are admitting i mean you're saying loving there there you're is familiar signage with that posted. statue there is signage posted Where? it's well it's not here readily viewable right, right here well, is it that kind of the problem then uh, on a I'm public not, sidewalk but that's again that's not really for holy crap to, you're the chief yeah okay i was not totally looking at anyone's like uh rank right around this area so you just came across as like the nicest guy in the universe so he pretty much is. okay so i'm definitely trying to be nice and everything yeah. like that but this okay here it's considered our pre-primary area so we do operations over here sure. plus we have pedestrians that can come in here yeah and stuff like that so we do inspections over here so yeah. this is considered a federal inspection area so now you have a firearm on, on you level. over there and everything yeah. like that. No, this is a federal inspection area. Then how so come now you guys you're violating don't, the law. So how come you guys don't have signage? Like I was telling Loving here, 18 USC 795 is really clear as far as you know taking photos, video, even even drawing replications of an area. You guys don't have that. You have nothing that says no loitering. The statute and the federal codes for loitering says if you don't have a purpose. So if I have a purpose, which is the very first liberty that we all have, literally the first one, even before carrying a firearm, it says you can, as press, as a journalist, go do your press thing. Now, if this was a prohibited area, if, you, if I saw a sign that said authorized person only, I would not go past that area. Okay, but I'm a federal officer right now, so sure. I'm the chief of the facility. So right yeah. now, okay, I explained the boundary to you. Right, so I'm telling you right now, so now you have a firearm mm -hmm. and stuff. Right, so I'm going to kindly... Ask you to leave now. If you so you're trespassing. Me. You can no, so do that. A, it's a federal law. Are you trespassing me? No, I'm not trespassing you. Well, I mean, so I'm telling you to leave right now. Okay, right? so that's a trespass warning. Look, I'm just. Uh, all I want to do is I want to, as a journalist, gather content for a story that says this is how it works at the border patrol crossing. Right? That's all it is. I'm, I have no nefarious intent. I don't want, I wish no one ill will. I don't want to hurt anyone. I'm not going to hurt anyone. We're actually having a very pleasant conversation. I don't understand what's going on here, but it sounds like you're saying I'm not allowed to be here, right? Uh, correct. So I'm informing you that you're not allowed to, I mean, like say if you're coming over here, you know, and you film for a couple of seconds and everything like that. So where's the and break point? Okay, for my area and everything like that. So we do operations all the way up to the limit line. Up the limit line. 
Where's the, right the limit line? The so the limit line is probably where that do not enter sign is over there. That red one? But I was on the grass and you literally came to me earlier and said I was fine to be up there. No, but we don't have pedestrians walking on the grass. We have pedestrians. So this isn't a public sidewalk? How is anyone supposed to know this? I mean, this is in fact part of the story. Okay, but I'm telling you right now, sir. <laughs> okay, but I, I understand that. Here, why don't you walk with me for a minute? Oh, uh, no, because I got to, you know, because I'm doing my job right now. So now you're impeding my job. And so, because we got people crossing over Major here. Major Loving just showed me the statute and the impedance says forcibly. I have to be forcibly, do, and obviously I'm not forcing you guys to do anything. Okay, on that, so you have that in your hand right now, right? So, uh, yeah. You want me to back up? Yeah, thank you. All right, sure. Okay. So look, if you're gonna if you're gonna impede my rights as a journalist to gather content on federal property that I'm allowed to be on by making up a, a barrier that nothing in statute forces, and you're threatening me with arrest or a citation or some sort of consequence, I'll go over there. But Colonel, I think you and I both know that that's not the case. You're just writing a fantasy novel right now. I'm not writing a fantasy novel. So are you? Like so are you basically going to say there's going to be consequences? You're going to cite me, or you're going to arrest me if I don't leave? Oh uh, yes. Man, why are you guys doing this? All right, I'll walk over there. Uh, do you have a business card or something? Oh uh, yeah. So you can go ahead and have my name. That's it. You don't have a business uh, card? Okay. I uh, know. Katano, a tool, loving. Yes, sir. Why? Why do you guys behave like this? It's really I'm not behaving anyway, so we're just you're, you're really harassed. acting. You're acting foolish. You're acting insulting. You're acting hostile. Not okay, not like you, a in a like a forcible way, but I mean, you just what's the whole point of this? You're putting on all the badge. You're putting on all this sort of stuff to defend American liberties, defend our country, and then you crap on us like this. What's up with the press? That's fine. You already threatened me with arrest. You threatened me with citation. I'll go over there, but you guys just really need to pull it in. Wow, threaten me with arrest. Threatening the press with arrest. Look at that. Unbelievable. 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 That's all right. You got to have a round one out of a couple rounds sometimes before you can uh, really get that fixed. Threaten me with arrest and or citation. That is weird. That guy that came out was, I don't know. I just, he seemed really nervous. That was the first guy I encountered seemed really nervous uh <laughs> it honestly shocks me that he's like the uh the commander or whatever of the uh border patrol station there so that's uh really ridiculous we're gonna just have to file a complaint and uh find a way to deal with that situation because that's absurd Well guys, um, after being threatened with arrest and a citation, then I decided to leave so that I can file a complaint and see about getting those guys tore up over that. It's really all you could do in that situation. There's a recent case, which was definitely something that was weighing on me because I thought about it, it's uh, Askins versus the uh, Department of Homeland Security. It's, uh, if I remember correctly, it was a case that came out or it was a situation that occurred 
in uh, 2018 and here in Blaine, Washington. Uh, or I'm sorry, no, I apologize. Let me correct that. It's Buell versus Agvert, the DHS US Customs Border Patrol agent uh, Agvert went to an inn called the Smuggler's Inn, did not have a warrant, did not have anything like that, ended up uh, smacking the guy, knocking him down in his own uh, building, on his own private property, because he saw, if I remember correctly, a, a man who appeared to have Turkish ancestry or appearances, and ended up uh, just completely violating this guy's rights. So, after that occurred, he ended up uh, filing a civil tort. And in that civil tort, he ended up uh, going through the entire appellate process. And in that appellate process, ended up going all the way to the Supreme Court. And that was ruled on in, on June 8th of last year, I believe. And it actually removed, for all intents and purposes, Bivens claims against federal agents. Um, and if you're not familiar with a Bivens claim, a Bivens claim is when you have had your rights violated by a federal agent. The original case is from a long time ago. I want to say it was the mid 50s. And it's Bivens versus six unidentified FBI agents. And in that case, because of the actions of the FBI agents, Bivens was a, uh, able to seek uh, claims for injury and won, uh, won the lawsuit. So in this case from June, Bivens was basically gutted by the uh, SCOTUS, the Supreme Court effectively gutted it. They didn't find it unlawful, but they said because of national security interests at the border specifically, it would unleash or unfold a litany of lawsuits and thereby would cause national security interests to be harmed. So effectively, and that was a first and a fourth amendment issue uh, in the case of uh, Boole versus Egbert. So it's literally, <laughs> according to the, the Supreme Court of the United States, you could have agents just kick the crap out of you and you literally could not sue them for that if it's in the course of their duties um, because of what happened to Boole. So it's a tricky, it's a tricky situation to navigate with Border Patrol because of that claim. But because it's Bivens that got gutted, it's just as, it's just as much that problem for the FBI, US Marshals, any federal agency, postal inspectors. So it's something I think for all of us as we're going around as uh, press journalists, uh, gathering content for stories, checking the government's responses to things that we got to be careful about because now as of about nine months ago, eight months ago, the uh, you know federal agents can just basically act crazy and get away with it. You can still sue the government uh, and seek consequences for them, but you're not going to nail that agent. It's just not going to happen. So anyways, I'll see you guys at the next location.
Go ahead, what's up? Not a lot. Just wanted to check and see if you need anything. Uh, got any coffee? <laughs> I wish. Uh, I wish, but no. Our coffee is well, what are you not actually worth drinking. If you had any questions or anything. Oh. Uh, I just figured I'd let you know kind of what areas are restricted here and which ones aren't. Obviously, you're fine where you're at. Oh, yeah. Public uh, sidewalk, all that kind of stuff. I mean, up over there in front of the building, all that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. Just, I, I would imagine anywhere that says no trespassing, authorized personnel only. Authorized personnel only, restricted area, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. For, for out here, like this area over here where we're... No, this is a federal inspection area. Then how so, come now you guys you're violating the law. So, how come you guys don't have signage, like I was telling Loving here? 18 U.S.C. 795 is really clear as far as, you know, taking photos, video, even even drawing replications of an area. You guys don't have that. You have nothing that says no loitering. The statute and the federal codes for loitering says if you don't have a purpose. So if I have a purpose, which is the very first liberty that we all have, literally the first one, even before carrying a firearm, it says you can, as press, as a journalist, Go do your press thing. Now, if this was a prohibited area, if, you, if I saw a sign that said authorized person only, I would not go past that area. Okay, but I'm a federal officer right now, so sure. I'm the chief of the facility. So right yeah. now, okay, I explained the boundary to you. Conducting inspections is technically a restricted area. Yeah, but not the sidewalk where the cop car is. The sidewalk on the way through over over to the cargo building. Yeah, that's, that's public sidewalk. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. But, uh, well, I uh, Baker, you're doing a hell of a lot better than your chief. Oh yeah, guys. About he just incurred a civil lawsuit uh, earlier today. About I'd say about an hour and a half ago. So yeah. it's a little unfortunate that uh, you're understanding this stuff, but your boss is uh, failing at basic civics. Huh. I know you can't comment on that. <laughs> I'm not saying you should. Anyways, he's your boss. I get it. Shit doesn't roll uphill; it rolls down. Well, things are <coughs> things are different between these different ports and stuff. And yeah. Oh, is the chief over there only the chief of that port? And there's a different chief of this one. Honestly, I I don't know who you dealt with over there. I don't know what the situation is. Uh, he's a he had Colonel Rank on. Um, I really don't know. We got so there was two majors, there. O'Toole and Loving. You know those guys? Yeah. Okay, so their boss okay the chief that's what he went by his he said his name is the chief has a little bit of a stutter not a really bad one but a little bit of one um but i, I can't remember his name if you need anything all right just let us know yeah no that's cool i uh just wanted to come through here and check things out it's actually not as busy as it normally is. is it really normally pretty busy so what's the what's the big stuff because, I mean, we always see, uh, you know, like the Mexican border is always crazy, right? I mean, that's where you hear all the stories. It looks like it's pretty common here. You guys get a whole bunch of crazy stuff up here, too, or? I think I think everywhere gets crazy really? stuff. Really? Okay. You, you work in a pizza restaurant and you see crazy well, stuff. Well, you know, <laughs> within context, yeah, yeah, I get that. I mean, within <laughs> the context of, like, borders, border patrol, I mean, it seems like this would be a much calmer low-key place to be than the mexican border we got all the drug cartels going crazy and i certainly like the weather up here more. yeah i bet it seems like it'd be a lot nicer up here than uh what 100 degrees on the average down there you, were you down there no oh yeah you're like thank god so how does it work do you guys eventually get rotated around everywhere or if you're here you're here kind of depends i mean when you put in for the job you can end up putting in for a certain kind of area like if you talk shit about your boss like the chief you could find yourself at the mexican border oh, that's not cool, yeah. <laughs> fair enough you, this is cool yeah i just hadn't been here before so is this i think i heard the term is this what's called like secondary yeah so this is a secondary inspection area where we do vehicle searches and whatnot. Gotcha, gotcha. So inside the building is another secondary inspection area. That's where we do, you know, issuing documents and processing travelers and whatnot. Gotcha. Okay. And then right. that's primary inspections where we conduct, uh, uh, as you can see, vehicle inspections. So generally, if you if you pull up and questions, certain questions are asked, and there's like, it's just regular. They just drive through as long as their documents are fine and all that. Yeah, I mean, every inspection is a little bit different. Got you. Cool. Well, I appreciate you answering the questions. I don't really uh, come up to. A lot of the questions are detailed stuff. Oh yeah, no, that's cool. I uh, 
I just like to come check different things out, see what it's all about, kind of stuff. Just working on a little story. So is this like all one like contiguous station? The one that's further over that way to this one, is it all under one person? Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. So this like it's just extended out. There's this is a port of entry, the other one's a port of entry. Are there any others in this area? Or is this the two? No, well, there's I don't remember how many ports Is this considered the there. Seattle area? We're under under the Seattle area, the Seattle field office. Gotcha. But like if you're trying to go to and fro relatively within this area, these are the two ports right here. The yeah. one over there and this one. Yeah. Got it. Okay. How many feet this way is Canada? It's literally just right there. Do you guys have those uh, stone pedestals or whatever like everywhere along this line or is that just decorative stuff? The closest there's there's one over by the, the Canadian port of entry on the other side of the like over here, over like there. if you're going that way. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, this is pretty cool. Never been up here before. I'm glad. Uh, well, two days ago when I got into town, it was the literally gale force oh, winds for that 40. That was gross. Oh, god, it was terrible. It was like ambient 22. And then with the winds, it was like negative seven or something. And you're just like, oh my God, that's got to suck for you guys up here. <laughs> What's that? The moon from? Oh, uh, Illinois. Just, I, I, I go out of the country and check just the things out. Yeah. Out of my so. You want to get your contact information for a movie you got? No, 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 that's cool. I actually I do investigative journalism, so I don't like to do the setup stuff because generally speaking, if, if someone knows you're coming, to get the suit and the tie on and make sure everything's nice and polished and everything. I like to show up and just see how it is. Because then you get the you get the raw reel, like, you know, like you're being awesome. If you got an advance warning for all I know, not having met you before, you could have been a terrible person, not saying you are. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh God, the media is showing up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna, you know, really look good today and not be a jerk. But you know, you show up and here you are acting perfectly fine. That's generally how I figure out if someone's you know, okay or not. By the way, not that the 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 three people I dealt with, O'Toole, uh, Loving, and then whatever the chief's name is, I don't know why I'm forgetting his name now, but um, they were nice. Like they weren't aggressive. They weren't acting crazy that way. But gosh, the the federal laws that they should have been aware of are just shocking. Plus that lawsuit that was settled what, three years ago now? I can't remember the Askins year. Askins versus the DHS. It was, it was against Customs and Border Patrol. I mean, wow, that one really, uh, that was a four year battle right there. That was a four. Four year lawsuit for, for the press. And when that one was done, I mean, it was, you know, pretty much an absolute beatdown on the on the uh, Department of Homeland Security in that lawsuit. So I just was shocked that the the chief didn't seem to know that, but it is what it is. That's why you got federal lawyers, right? Uh, I don't know. Like I said, it's hard for me to to say. I don't know what happened. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. So what's this building over here? So do you Some guys trucks drive over that way and they get processed through there and do you guys get like i mean i know you can't give me specifics but like obviously drugs come through everywhere right i mean you get drugs literally i'm sure at every port of entry but when you compare it to like the mexican border do you guys get anywhere near the same kind of drug or volume of drugs that come from the north as compared to the south i just can't imagine that it would be the same i think i think there's a lot of drugs in mexico I yeah mean. yeah uh, Seems like that you'd have more coming from that direction. Than I don't. Direction. I don't know that there's necessarily more or less. I don't. I don't have that information. Gotcha. Yeah, 
it just seems like it would be a heck of a lot more over there. So is it literally on the other side of that fence right there? That's Canada? Yeah. You guys ever get kids doing stupid jump across the border and back games? I don't know. <laughs> I could just see I could just see teenagers doing something like that. Jumping across the border, bouncing back, trying to be silly. Yeah, that, that. <laughs> so, and this is what again? This so this is this is all a secondary inspection line. So it's all connected. A bit. Oh, so one of these people has been, and they're coming in here to get the inspection or whatever. Oh, so like someone's coming through with plutonium. It's gonna pick it up. Probably not a commonly smuggled thing, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to get it done now for my filming and whatnot, recording rather. No way. This is Slick Willie's building, huh? Oh, you never heard of Slick Willie? Oh, come on. That guy is like, they call him Teflon Bill, Slick Willie. That man was, is gifted with the, the gab. I don't know about now. He's getting kind of old, but that guy was the perfect. And by perfect, I don't mean that in a good way. Politician. Yeah. Oh God, it can't, it can't pick it up that far away. It goes out about 20 feet tops. It's directional, it's not, it, the omnidirectional are much more powerful. So what, what's down that way around that building? Is that basically where they're looping around or something? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Trucks parked back behind that area and get inspected and whatnot. Gotcha. Yeah, so out of curiosity, since that uh, lawsuit by the ACLU was completed three years ago, have you guys received instruction on what that distance is according to the agreement between ACLU and, uh, well, technically Askins and Ramirez? The, what the distance is? I'm sorry. Yeah, for, so, for the distance for press. Because the, uh, the lawsuit, as it, as it was completed at the Supreme Court, stated that uh, the press can go up and film everything audio video recordings what have you been instructed on as to the distance that you're allowed to to be at like for example yeah, i could for, go get for, for this like camera a, i've got a i got a lens in my vehicle that could zoom in on someone's nose hairs in that vehicle and i've got an audio amplifier that could pick up the conversations from up about a half a block that way all the way right over to those points so what uh what have you guys been instructed on in terms of that distance and whatnot so we are always paying attention to settlements whether it has to do with criminal law administrative stuff <laughs> civil civil cases um I, I couldn't tell you what a specific distance is mm -hmm. i would have to go and look um, gotcha we we have specific areas you know like i was telling you earlier mm -hmm. the the secondary inspection areas the anywhere where we're actually conducting inspections mm -hmm. um, so what is it about the secondary uh, areas for inspections that uh, trips alarms or, or whatnot and, and definitively says someone can or cannot be in this area? Because like I said, I mean, the sidewalks are all, it's all public area. So what is it exactly that would prohibit someone from audio and video recording over in that area? So we're talking privacy, other people's inspections. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's not covered by statute. That's just a, that's a request at that point. And also officers conducting their jobs. Sure. Um, but, you know, Fort Ice versus City of Seattle, I mean, that was another one that made it clear. I mean, federal, I mean, that's federal out of Ninth Circuit, which this area is federal. So is there anything else that you guys were given in terms of instructions that prohibits media from audio and visually recording from that sidewalk over there into the secondary? It's a good question. 
Who could, who could um, I ask? I don't necessarily have an yeah. answer for you on that. Who could I ask? Because I, I got to say, I with would, that whole Askins thing, my intent is to go over to secondary to that vehicle right now and audio visual record from probably about five feet away. So the person that I would, if you wanted the specific details on, on like media recording and whatnot, I would send you, give you our, our media relations. Well, I'm more looking guys, for a person who's going to make the decision today because my intention is to cross this cross port uh, sidewalk area and get over there and audio video record. All right. Well, I'm happy to go and figure that out for you. Sure. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm happy to just keep getting some video, audio, and photographs here. I'm happy to wait. I want this to be amicable. I'm not looking to what Positive what problems. specifically are you looking to record well so I, I can't can... I can't really get into that too much because being an investigative journalist if I reveal the story in advance or too much of it it could sway how you behave understood and you know that's part of what's going on here is to see you know how you guys handle different situations so uh, already you're, handle, you're handling this situation in a much more professional manner than the chief and those two majors, O'Toole and Loving over on the other side. So uh, that speaks volumes at least as to it being different over here. But uh, like I said, you know, that, that Supreme Court ruling is pretty straightforward. It was, uh, it was a DHS beatdown. Yeah. I mean, it really was so, an absolute beatdown. I mean, one thing that I carry around with me all the time, uh, because there are certain times when we have issues inside the lobby and we mm -hmm. need to explain it to people is sure. I carry around like the rules for for federal buildings and whatnot sure um, I don't think it really answers the question that you have no there, so. no I mean like title 41 of the CFRs goes over weapons and recording generally and then because of uh, that disagreement between the DHS and Askins the ACLU went over for a uh, carpet bombing in the courtroom of DHS and I think this, the remaining bits of soul of DHS's lawyers are spread over about a good 10 miles from that beat down in court. So uh, I'm here to just really partially, one of the things I want to do is see what it is that you guys are being instructed on. Sure. And like I said, my intent is to go right back across to that sidewalk over there and audio and video record those people's secondary uh, uh, inspection. To pick up every all the words that are being said to listen to law enforcement officials in the courses of their duty how they're uh handling themselves over there so uh i'm like i said happy to wait though if you want to no, go talk to whoever the i get i don't know what you call them station supervisor manager uh, that, so i'm i will go in there and and get you some information it's one of those things that it's one of those situations where I know I'll put my foot in my mouth if I go and try and start quoting stuff. No, no, no. Hey, that's off, that. So. No, I don't want you to do that. I, I think the, the best way to go about this is do it exactly what you're saying. I mean, shoot, I don't think anybody goes and has everything memorized, right? There's I, too much for that. So I, I'll, I'll cross back over here with you. I'll just wait over here. And then if you want to, I don't know, whoever it is, station manager or whatever you guys call them, have them come out or get their info and bring it out. That's cool. Definitely not looking for gotcha moments or anything like that. So I'm just looking to see if there's uh, what's happening, how it's happening, all that kind of stuff. So since there's a chief over all of this, what do you call the person that's in charge of just this port right here? Right now it's I'm a supervisor. Oh, you are, okay. We've got, we've got watch commanders, we've got so kind of like normal director. police departments, kind of, sort of, in a way. Sounds some of that sounds familiar. Just a chain. Yeah, all, there's always a chain of management. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll wait here, and uh, yeah, I'll just wait here. So appreciate it, Baker. Yeah, no worries. I ended up putting my foot in my mouth earlier. What's that? So I was telling you that you shouldn't be recording over there, the inspections and whatnot you shouldn't enter those areas to record from where you're at as long as you don't have anything that's changing your your vantage you know um you can record from from this area from uh, what from, from, from the from the from the sidewalk yeah the from public. the paved sidewalk oh yeah i'm not gonna walk in there jeez i mean that that yeah. is very clear so 
That's I, where your I'm, vehicles are parked. I was mixing that up with actually going into those areas, in which case you can if you get prior permission and you can yeah like walking out into where the cars are oh yeah geez no i mean honestly i mean yeah could it be technically different sure but i mean it's pretty obvious to me plus i mean why would i need to step out into where the vehicles are as opposed to just standing right on the curb or something like that so and, and who did you contact over there i just went in and, and looked at oh you just looked it up why not stuff. okay i've got everything for this i, I have the settlement the internal. Askins one? Yeah, I have yeah. Our, our, you read it? I have, well, I don't remember the name, but I have the settlement for yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm kind of curious what you think about another one, because you seem like a really reasonable guy. The other one is Bull versus Egbert. You know who Egbert is? No. Really? Uh, he so, was up here. So I'm not, I'm not in a position where I can, like, speak on camera about Oh, no, I'm just talking, like, as, things, a, as a person, but just don't want to comment on it? No, no. <laughs> okay. no. It, do you I guys, genuinely don't know what you're talking about. Do you guys have an agent that works up in this area called Egbert? E G B E R T? I don't know. He probably got fired. But I, yeah, that was the one where, if, I'll tell you about it, and I'm pretty sure you're going to remember this. So there's that place I'm sure you guys are all familiar with called the Smuggler's Inn. Okay. <laughs> you got to know what that is. Everybody local. Everybody knows what the Smuggler's Inn is. So Egbert, as I read the case, uh, saw a man of, of what appeared to be Turkish ancestry, thought it suspicious, went onto the guy's private property, went into his home, knocked him to the ground, and said he was going to search the place and the man's vehicle, the Turkish guy's vehicle, did that. The guy sued. I don't know. Are you familiar with what's called a Bivens claim? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the Supreme Court just gutted that. So now you guys can pretty much rape and pillage all that you want. You won't be personally responsible. For I I remember seeing seeing that decision. Yeah, uh, yeah like, recently wasn't like, it? Like, uh, the yeah. decision. That was June eighth, the twenty twenty two. Yep. So now, obviously, you commit a crime, it doesn't remove you from the criminal part of it. Like, obviously, if you go rape somebody, you're going to get charged. And I was soon convicted of rape, but but the the Bivens part of it, no longer it. So. You beat somebody down, you might get uh, charged for, with something maybe, but you won't. You have literally no civil liability anymore at all, none, zero. Because the justices said there's uh, too much possibility of there being an infinite series of lawsuits, which obviously speaks poorly about the police. Because if they're saying there's going to be an infinite, near infinite amount of lawsuits, it obviously means the police are doing too much. But then the other thing that they said is because of the nature of your guys' jobs with national security, that national security apparently trumps the fourth, the first amendment, probably all the amendments. So now you guys can just start launch kick the shit out of people and you have no personal liability. Four, so, not saying uh, you would do that. I don't think you would. I you, certainly would not. Do yeah. That, but um, you don't seem like the kind of guy that goes unhinged and does crazy stuff I'll like that. I'll have to reread that that decision. You, you, I commend you for your memory because I. Oh it's, well, I mean, as uh, as press, I have to I have to read this stuff because you know sometimes there's gray area stuff like what the chief just did over there. It's he's making it seem like it's gray area stuff. I don't think it is, but you know I'll handle that later. But you know there is legitimately gray area things, and sometimes it gets solved, and sometimes they remain gray area things and that's part of what we got to do is press is come up and do the litmus test figure it out so i really appreciate no, your professionalism by the way today no, you're being, you're being great. i recommend you for chief so <laughs> okay. yeah 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 no sweat have questions or anything, there are people here that you can reach out to. Cool. After the fact, questions. Okay. Yeah, hey, really appreciate it, Baker. Thanks. No worries. You take care. Have a good day.
You guys ready for that snowstorm? Not really. What? Come on. I wasn't even ready for this, man. Right? <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, the I, I'm I'm off work and out of the area at about five tonight. I think that's when the snowstorm's coming, so wow. I'm gonna hightail it out of here. That doesn't sound like it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Yeah, what was that, uh, two days ago, 40 mile an hour winds? Yeah. I was coming in out of state and I think it said uh, gale force winds. Usually people say that sarcastically, but in this case it was actually true. That real field was like 9 degrees or something like that. Oh, I, I think it was a little worse because at one point it was 18 degrees ambient in the morning yeah. with 40 mile an hour winds, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's that sucks for you guys. Yeah, especially out here. Huh? Well, yeah, you're gonna totally get a wind tunnel in here. Yeah. I mean, oh my God. Look at this. This is exactly what it was too. If you look at 41, so this is 41 CFR, but if you look at 102.74 and you come over to weapons, 440, prohibits the possession of firearms or other dangerous weapons in federal facilities and federal court facilities. So the chief just completely screwed up. Hey, uh, is there any way you could ask uh, Baker to come back out again? I got another question for him. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Appreciate it. You guys are remarkably chill over here compared to the other place. Jeez. Must be giving them pot cookies or something over here. Hey Baker, I have two more questions for you. Sorry, I probably won't pull you back out into the cold again. See this one right here? See where it says weapons prohibited? Yeah. What's your uh, what's your understanding of that? That's inside of here, right? Correct. Not out here. So on the sidewalk, yeah, it's fine. Oh um, man. In the inspection area, weapons prohibited. Sure, sure, sure. You can't. So yeah. you know one thing. I mean, and then. Uh, over here, sidewalk, right? Yes. All right. Cool. All right. Just wanted to get your official take on it, so appreciate that. So, one thing that is that um, you want to walk with? Me? No. Okay. No, I'm. You good? I'm good. Okay. All right. Thanks, Baker. There you go, guys. That just sealed the deal for the chief. That did not work out well for him. And got everything I needed here. So 
Hey Chief, this is definitely talking to you buddy. You have made a, an enormous mistake. It's pretty obvious. As I quoted it to you earlier Chief, but you can also see right there, it's absolutely a lawful thing to carry firearms over here. So, I'm afraid we're gonna have to take that up. At least get counsel for this with the ACLU. You all have a good day. Take care. And there you go. So part two here is definitely both telling and damning for the chief. Baker seems extremely knowledgeable. I think you could tell his discomfort at the end there. He, uh, I think realized after I told him what the chief had done that there was a bit of a problem and that is a fact there is a bit of a problem here so we'll uh, reach out to some council I'll reach out to some council see what they say I already got the uh, the threat the coercion and the uh, violation of my rights on camera. So that's all you can do. Like I said, I don't think it's actually worth going through that process when it's effectively as good as uh, it can be getting that, that threat. So we'll uh, proceed forward with that, but that's a, that's a wrap here for the Border Patrol in Blaine, Washington. Had to get a second uh, part two if you will as I said for uh, this other port see if there's any difference see if they were gonna respect my liberties and they did uh, you could really tell the discomfort from Baker but I think in the end he did the right thing um, so yeah that's uh, about it for here